what is the best way to maximize the income of your portfolio? I've been actively covering some of the best high dividend income ETFs available in the market, and covered call ETFs have become increasingly popular amongst investors. These investments use a covered call strategy on their underlying assets to generate a premium, which is then distributed to investors in the form of a dividend. And they typically have dividend yields upwards of 10 to 12%, which is fantastic for income-oriented investors. Now, there's a few major benefits with these investments. For one, they act as a perfect hedge in a downward trend because the extreme dividend yield they provide creates a perfect counterweight to a dropping stock price. The high dividends also allow investors to regularly dollar cost average. So at a time where your favorite stocks go on sale, you want a consistent flow of cash to facilitate the dollar cost averaging. Another major benefit is that these investments have low beta values, exhibiting less volatility than the overall market. But there's also one major problem. You see, all covered call ETFs are still subject to downside volatility, some more than others. And the downside volatility is no different than investing in a regular stock or ETF. And that is why the underlying assets are very important to consider when looking for a suitable investment. Covered call strategies always leave the downside completely open and vulnerable. So yes, you'll be generating income no matter what the situation is, but in a bear market, your account will suffer price depreciation. So in a sense, it's never really pure income. Unlike a high yield savings account or a money market account, the downward price volatility is only cushioned, so it's not really providing asset protection and your portfolio value will still see the impact. And as an income investor, it's very important to try to minimize NAV depletion, especially for retirees who have accumulated a large amount of money. The last thing you wanna see is your portfolio losing value over time. Now, in order to achieve maximum portfolio protection, investors will typically shift their focus to fix fixed income investments like bonds and treasuries or high yield money market funds. These are known to provide amazing asset protection while also generating a substantial amount of money. But the trade-off is that your income is simply not as much. Your potential for profit in the bond market is very limited, especially in short-term treasuries that are simply known as risk-free investments. Now, you could consider long duration bonds like 10-year or 20-year treasuries, but those do come with a considerable amount of interest rate risk. The longer the maturity date, the more volatility you will be subject to. So again, not really providing asset protection. Currently, the average interest rate on short duration bonds is around 5%, which is fantastic. But this is strictly because of the rapid rise in interest rates that we've been seeing, affecting the yields on fixed income investments. Under normal circumstances, bond yields are not that high unless you consider junk bonds, which again carry a lot more risk. And considering that we may have reached a peak in interest rates and could be seeing rate cuts in 2024, the yields on bonds will see a significant decline and simply will not be the most profitable. So you see, it's almost as if the potential for higher income is always accompanied with more risk. But what if there was a way to maximize dividend income and at the same time minimize downside volatility? Almost like investing in bonds, but taking all of the benefits of high dividend income investments like covered call ETFs and putting them into one package. And this is where things get really interesting. And this brings me to HIGH, which is the Simplify Enhanced Income ETF. This ETF almost behaves like a bond, but uses a variety of option trading strategies to boost its dividend distribution, which is almost in line with most covered call ETFs, creating a very interesting investment instrument that can do wonders for those who strictly seek income, but at the same time want genuine asset protection. So before we continue, let's run through the fundamentals so you can get a better understanding of this ETF. Now, on a side note, the platform that is being used throughout this video is Seeking Alpha, and they are currently running a special offer of 30% off their premium plan. The promotion starts today and runs until December 5th, so make sure you grab this amazing offer before it's gone. Moving on. HIGH was established on October 27, 2022, so it is very new and just passing one year since its inception. Currently, the fund has over $200 million of assets under management, which is amazing, although still on the lower end, meaning that the fund is not very liquid, so investors may have difficulties buying and selling shares of this ETF and may be hit with relatively high transaction costs. But the best part is that this ETF has a dividend yield of over 8.3%, almost in line with Jeppy, which is a very popular covered call ETF, frankly, the most popular, and currently has a dividend yield of 9.1%. When you look at the fund's historical performance year to date, you see almost no volatility. 
Its price returns and volatility are essentially like a short duration bond. In fact, when you compare it side by side with one of the most popular short duration high income bond ETFs, JPST, you see that they practically replicate each other in terms of overall volatility. But HIGH crushes JPST in terms of total return with its extreme dividend yield of over 8.3% outperforming JPST by more than 2.5% year to date. What's even more interesting is when you compare the fund's total returns with the most popular covered call ETF, JEPI, you see that they have returned practically the exact same amount, but JEPI was subject to a lot more volatility. So essentially, you have a fund that replicates the price performance of a very safe short duration bond ETF, but also provides a dividend yield that is on par with a covered call ETF. So essentially taking the best attributes of these two investments and combining it into one ETF, which is absolutely amazing and could become an income investor's best friend. So how does this ETF work? HIGH seeks to provide monthly income by holding a short-term portfolio of income producing US treasuries and using an option spread writing strategy. So let's break that down. This ETF primarily invests in US treasury securities that on average tend to have maturities of two years or less. And as mentioned before, short duration bonds are known to be subject to very little risk. Now, in order to generate this amazing dividend yield, the fund managers use an option spread writing strategy on fixed income ETFs and equity indexes. The option spread is used to generate premium income. So essentially, the fund is combining the interest collected from the bond investments with the premium income collected from the option spread strategy and then distributing that to investors in the form of a dividend yield. Now, there's a few major details we have to cover. An option spread is very different from the typical covered call strategy. An option spread combines buying and selling of option contracts in order to generate premium income, as opposed to just selling option contracts. So essentially how this works is the fund manager will decide to sell a call option or a put option that is out of the money with one month to expiration, then purchase another option contract that is further out of the money, maintaining a net positive premium and also limiting the downside risk. So let's run through an example so you can get a better understanding. Let's say the price of a stock SPY sits at $400. A put option spread would be selling a put option at a strike price of $390 and then buying a put option at a strike price of $380. From the put option that you sold, you would receive a premium of let's say $200. But the put option that you purchased that was further out of the money, it would cost you let's say $100. So now you are at a net positive premium of $100 with a bullish bet on the underlying stock. If SPY appreciates in value in the next month, closing above $390, your put spread will expire out of the money or in other words, expire worthless and therefore keeping the $100 positive premium. Now, the reason behind doing a put spread is if the underlying asset price falls below the strike price of the put option that you sold within the month, then the purchase put option will offset the losses. And with a put spread, your losses are defined. So going into this trade, you know what your maximum losses could be. It's not unlimited. And how you know is by the price range between the two put option strike prices. Going back to our previous example, this put spread will give you a $100 net positive premium and a maximum loss of $1,000. So because the two option contracts have a $10 price difference and options are priced in hundreds, that will translate to a $1,000 maximum loss. This strategy can also be replicated with call options. Going back to our example, a call option spread on SPY could be selling a call option at a $410 strike price and receiving a $200 premium and then purchasing a call option at a $420 strike price for $100. But this is a bearish bet, so you want the underlying stock price to fall or stay below $410 by expiration. And I will be making a video that goes through option spreads and different option strategies in detail. Now, it's really important to remember that the main purpose of using this strategy is to benefit from theta decay and collect as much premium as necessary to achieve the fund's target dividend yield. For those who don't know what theta decay is, I do have a video that goes through it in detail and you can check it out right here. But essentially, theta decay is time decay. All option contracts are subject to time decay, which means that they lose value as they approach their expiration. And the closer they get to the expiration, the more pronounced the effect of time decay is. So the fund managers will either hold the option positions until expirations, or they will make adjustments if there are major price swings in the ETFs. And just to reiterate, the option spread strategy is used on fixed income ETFs and other domestic equity-based ETFs. So like I said before, the fund is using a combination of interest income collected from the short duration bond 
and the option spread strategy to generate its dividend yield. But because more than 5% of its income is generated through short duration bonds, the fund doesn't necessarily need to use an aggressive option trading strategy to generate the remaining 3.3%. Remember, this is annual, so in order to generate a 3.3% return through option trading, you can take a very safe and low risk approach. We're talking around 0.275% per month in returns generated from options. This is why the fund is very unique. It's essentially a short duration bond ETF that uses options to generate an even larger yield to provide investors with a better source of income generation and superior asset protection. But this wouldn't be a complete video if we didn't talk about the downsides, and unfortunately, there are some issues that need to be addressed. To begin, the fund's expense ratio is rather high, currently sitting at over 0.5%. Typically, I wouldn't focus on the very high expense ratio when it comes to covered call ETFs, strictly because these types of funds are still able to appreciate in value. So on top of the dividend yield, they also have relatively strong price appreciation, which can make up for the relatively high expense ratios. But this ETF has very limited ability to appreciate in value. Like I said, it's almost like holding a short duration bond ETF, which its primary function is to provide income. So losing half a percent every year can have a significant long-term impact on total returns. Also, interest rates on short duration bonds are at historically high levels and we haven't seen this since 2007. But we do know that interest rates may have finally reached their peak and the Federal Reserve should be doing interest rate cuts very soon. And when that happens, the income that this fund is receiving from its bond holdings will fall accordingly. So instead of a 5.1% interest rate, they may only collect, let's say 4% or 3% one or two years down the road. So when that happens, the fund managers will be forced to take a more aggressive approach to their option strategy in order to maintain their target dividend yield. Now, granted, a shift of around 3.3% from option income to 5% doesn't seem so dramatic when you look at it on an annual basis, but it does mean that the fund managers will have to take on a little bit more risk in order to generate more income. And the reason I say that is because with option spreads, the closer your strike price is to the money, which is the price the ETF is currently trading at, the more income you receive. But at the same time, you subject yourself to a lot more risk. And when using an option spread strategy, if things do not go the way the fund manager expects, the only outcome is a loss of funds. Overall, I find this ETF to be a very interesting and unique investment instrument that can help income investors generate a substantial amount of money while exposing themselves to much lower levels of downside volatility. Combining all the great attributes of a high income covered call ETF with a fixed income investment, creating an almost perfect combination. I'm very curious to see how this ETF will perform once interest rates do start to trend lower and how that will impact the fund's dividend distribution. But for now, I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on this one. And that is all for this one. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.